Hello, everyone. Shalom, marhaba, and uh, welcome um, to this really, really incredible, exciting uh, webinar we have for you today on UAE in Israel, the business of peace. Uh, we have two amazing speakers with us whom I will introduce uh, very shortly, John Medved and Dr. Sabah Al-Binali, uh, two incredible uh, incredible entrepreneurs, uh, business leaders, and really inspiring uh, inspiring visionaries who have achieved and are still um, you know, contributing so much. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Aris Mastrovsky. Uh, before I do uh, get into the formalities and we open this, um, I wanted to first acknowledge some of our uh, some of our important partners, without whom, of course, this would not have been possible. Uh, first and foremost, to uh, John, your team at our crowd, who, for those that do not know, I don't know how many here there are, but for those that don't know, our crowd is one of Israel's top uh, VC and investment firms. And... According to Bloomberg, and I quote, hands down the most successful equity crowd funding platform in the world, who under John's, uh, John's uh, tremendous uh, leadership have invested in over 200 companies and funds, participated in 40 plus uh, exits since 2013 and attracted more than one and a half billion in commitments, which I'm sure is only growing uh, from strength to strength as we speak. Um, Really just an incredible success story all around. Um, thank you to TLV Internationals and Jay Schultz, also without whom this would not be possible. TLV Salons is the largest, uh, uh, the largest um, speakers forum in Israel uh, with many thousands of people who have had some of the most uh, dynamic and, uh, and high level inspiring speakers, uh, not least such as uh, our guests uh, today. Uh, thank you also to Sharaka, which was founded by social activists from Israel and the UAE in the aftermath of the historic peace agreement between uh, between the two countries, the platform to strengthen the bond between, especially between young people um, and social activists from the Gulf and uh, from Israel. And just uh, last, um, just a few weeks, actually, um, in a historic delegation, they brought up the first group uh, to Israel from uh, Bahrain and the UAE, uh, who saw the country for themselves, which was really something quite incredible as well. 
and of course to uh, Times of Israel, uh, an important partner who are also uh, broadcasting and streaming this event. Um, and um, so with that, before we do begin, uh, just a couple of housekeeping uh, questions, uh, just so everyone knows, we will, uh, this will be on for about an hour. I'm going to ask our esteemed guests a few questions myself. We got a lot, a lot of questions from the audience. Now you can still submit them now through Facebook, through Twitter, through uh, LinkedIn, um, however many platforms we have uh, going at the, at the moment. Um, so we, we invite you, we've got a lot, of, a lot of questions. So we'll try and get through as many as we can, John and Sabah. So thank you for that. Uh, before we just start, just to introduce very lastly our two amazing speakers. John is the, C is the CEO of our crowd. I've already introduced the company, but he is a serial entrepreneur whom the Washington Post has described as one of Israel's leading high-tech venture capitalists, the New York Times. John, I've called you one of the top 10 most influential Americans who have impacted uh, Israel. Uh, I really could try to think of any other individual that has um, you know, epitomized Israel's success this is a startup nation um, as you, um, Dr. Al-Binali, um, who's joining us also from our crowd, the newly appointed uh, EU-based um, venture partner and head of the, the Gulf region. Um, he is a seasoned financial ex services executive with over 20 years of uh, experience in investments and entrepreneurial leader with a track record in financing, building uh, and exiting uh, companies, including some of the biggest companies truly in the world and specifically in the Middle East and North Africa region. Um, with that, Yella, everyone, let's uh, let's get on get on the road. Let's let's start the show. We have a, a lot, a lot of questions to go. Um, I wanted to start off by um, um, noting um, a few weeks ago in a video uh, that has now gone viral, um, Mohammed Al Alaba, one of the, the UAE's leading business uh, figures, the, the man behind the stunning Burj Khalifa building. Um, he was speaking at a conference of Israeli and uh, Marathi Gulf uh, business leaders. And he said that when he speaks to people that it's not all about business and transactions. He said that if you want to work with him, you have to first meet his mother meet his uh, friends and his, and, his, and his kids. So Sabah, I wanted to ask you, if I wanted to do business with you, do I have to first meet your mother, meet your, your wife, your family and, and your kids in order to do business? I think uh, Mohammed Al Abbar was, 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 was uh, trying to hammer home a point. I think really what he's saying is that building a long-term relationship does that. I, I joined our crowd uh, without meeting uh, John's family or his, him, his meeting mine, but our wives have now met. It's only been three months. So I think the idea here is, is, is to try to point out that, that business relationships, if they're going to be long-term, are going to be uh, uh, sort of more community and social-based uh, as well. Um, and, and, and I think that's really the point. And I think that, that the, 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 the community-based uh, <laughs> uh, uh, social life of both Israelis and, and Emiratis is actually quite similar. There, there are other differences, but, but that is very uh, similar. Um, so that, that's how I would interpret this comment. I mean, today, you know, Arsen, we meet each other on Zoom. This is how we're conducting this global salon. And it turns out that we were introduced, uh, uh, Sabah and uh, myself, via email by a friend. But we then quickly met, you know, on Zoom and had our romance on Zoom. And he got hired on Zoom. <laughs> okay. In other words, we uh, he was working, you know, with us at our crowd as a partner for many weeks until we finally met face to face in Dubai. We've now met twice. We're awaiting the fact that he can come to Israel as soon as the lockdown's over. But just a couple of weeks ago, we did get together with the wives. And I think the point is a really good one, which is that uh, all too many people, especially in our country, in Israel, often view uh, the investment business or the startup business as transactional. Let's go get a deal done. Let's rush to you know put some points on the board. And I, I think that the really important business is done as a relationship. Uh, and the most important part is, is gaining trust and, and taking a long-term view, which is that, you know, move fast. Where I think we're moving 
faster than anybody in terms of what we're building, but we're building it to last, right? We're building uh, human relationships. We're building corporate relationships with our partners at Alna Buddha and others. We're working with the government who has been unbelievable in terms of supporting us. And we're in this for, for decades and centuries. That's the kind of outlook that we're, we're, we're taking. Can I ask you, John, the, I mean, for many people, it seems like the Abraham Accords uh, happened overnight. We know that's, you know, that's not quite the case. There have been many people, uh, business leaders, civil society leaders uh, working on this for many years. For you, the Gulf is not new. You know, you didn't discover it in August uh, 20, in August 2020. So did you have an eye for the region? Did you, uh, before August, uh, did you anticipate that this would eventuate, that something like this would come? And I would ask the same question uh, uh, to you, Sabah. Was this uh, on your radar? Was this something that you would imagine would, have, uh, would eventuate? Look, I, I think that um, both Sabah and I, I'll let him speak for himself, we're ready for this. Okay, that's what allowed us to get this done as soon as the uh, the formalities and the and the governments had got together. Uh, I was in uh, Abu Dhabi actually just about a year ago in December of 2019, and I was rather amazed that I was not just invited to speak at an investment conference, but that conference was sponsored by a sovereign wealth fund. And and when I asked them, well, look, do you want me to you know, limit my conversation about things that are not Israeli oriented. They go, why? And I said, well, is it, is it politic for me to talk about Israel openly? And they said, of course, why do you think we're inviting you? You know, to talk about Silicon Valley. I mean, you know, I, I know something about the Valley, but I'm, an, I'm a, more of an expert on Israel. So we, we saw this coming. My first company uh, that did real business there was a company called Vringo, which whose early customers were, were Gulf companies like Etisalat and, and others. So um, this has been on the table for a long time, but it took some really bold, wonderful leadership uh, on both sides to really make this happen with help from the US. So, I mean, for, for me, it, uh, I could never guess the timing, but I, I think it's it's also important to understand that, that, the, that the links, uh, although they, they were not necessarily direct uh, before the Abraham Accords also existed. I mean, we, 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 in, we in the both countries or investors from both countries invest globally. And, and really, um, you know, the, the, the person who um, introduced uh, John and I to each other is, is, is you know, so he's, he's an American, but, but um, with, with deep ties, uh, both within the Emirates and within, within Israel. So as, as John said, I think um, everyone was ready and both uh, Israeli and Emirati businesses have been doing business around the world. So, so, so moving forward, uh, once the, the normalization uh, was, was agreed and announced was, was very straightforward. Um, so I, I, think, I think that, that, um, that, that, uh, this, that this was, a, a, you know, it, it's a great thing that it's happened in my lifetime. Uh, I look forward to, to it, but, but to, to the fact that it happened isn't a surprise. Uh, and but the, the, the timing was uh, fortuitous. Is it something that to, I suppose to the both of you, <clears throat> something that just that seems uh, natural? And I can tell you from my experience, you know, having um, <clears throat> having met uh, Emiratis in person now, not just through Zoom, not just through online, having met them in person, it's been the most effortless, the most natural uh, thing in the world, which is beautiful. Um, something that I think. The way, it, the way it should be. So it does make you wonder why wasn't it like this uh, before? So from your end, you know, is it something that's, that's just natural? Look, I, I, I often feel that uh, Sabah is a, a brother from another mother. Okay. Um, we enjoy each other's company, I can say. You know, I, I knew that we were right when he, you know, really uh, tore off on me after about three or four days of, I think, working together, where he just called me out of line on something I had done wrong. And I, I felt so at home. That was such, I hate to say it, an Israeli kind of behavior pattern, but 
it's an Emirati, you know, I, I, my sense is, is that the Emirati culture is ex extraordinary. And I don't think that uh, enough of uh, my Israeli comrades really understand what's going on over there. What an extraordinarily entrepreneurial place it has been. You know, it's this city of Oz that just grew out of the desert out of sheer will and intelligence and hard work. And uh, the people that I've met have been extraordinary, lovely people, very committed to family, share huge amounts of, va of values. And it turns out, because we, we live in the Middle East, right? We, you know, even if you don't speak Arabic, if you live in Israel, you know hundreds of words in Arabic, okay? You can eat together. It's the, the whole thing just works. And, and I want to, Echo what you said, which is you just after you're done for a couple of days, you know, doing business in Dubai or Abu Dhabi or elsewhere, you just ask yourself, whoa, why didn't this happen earlier? And, and we all know why. But the bottom line is that it is a wonderful thing that has transpired. And I, and I think it's it's very going to be very long lasting forever, inshallah. I, I, I think uh, I think when when you talk about the investor and, and business communities, they they've been uh, uh, looking forward to this. Um, you know, I won't get into the the political uh, uh, or the policy, government policies. That's that's for for their decision. Um, but from a business point of view, uh, everyone's been looking forward to this. We have economies that are about the same size. Uh, we have a lot of complementary uh, um, skill sets that make a lot of sense. And, and we'll get to, to this uh, a, a little later. I, I think, you know, when, when you think of these countries, not just as destination markets for each other, but as gateways into, into one into the Western hemisphere, one into the Eastern hemisphere, uh, this is about comparative advantage, really. That, that, Working together, you're going to see some very, very interesting things in the next couple of years. I want to ask before we do, we have a lot of questions. So before we go on to them, um, I want to ask one question about um, it's hard to escape Corona. It's everywhere. Um, and it literally, as we're holding this session now, Israel is about to go into another lockdown. At the same time, Israel is leading the world spectacularly in terms of uh, vaccinations per capita, something like four times as much as the next uh, highest country. So in this sort of sphere, you know, we've seen the relationship go from zero to 100 miles an hour almost immediately from August. How do you see uh, COVID affecting this in terms of going forward, short term and perhaps uh, long term? Um, is it something that will be slowed down? for the time being. Um, are there any opportunities in the COVID era that you see in terms of possible collaboration maybe? Look, I, I think that um, <clears throat> like in many other areas of life, COVID has acted as a uh, slower, you know, as a slowing agent and as an accelerant. So, you know, it slowed the ability to travel and to get there, you know, was on and off again. While it was on, there were 70,000 Israelis that traveled and it's just a, literally two and a half hour flight. It's unbelievable how close it is. But on the other hand, it's, it's accelerated things. And it's accelerated things because there's real interest in finding uh, cures, finding you know new vaccines, new diagnostics. We have a company uh, that's literally in these very days working with very important people on the other side, uh, pioneering new technology in this area. There was a Great announcement from Sheba uh, Medical with Alma Buddha about a, uh, 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 you know, working together on a Israeli-run medical center, you know, in the uh, in the Gulf. And my sense is that the uh, as much as we've been slowed down because of lockdowns and travel restrictions, we've been accelerated, like many other digital parts of the economy, by the ability to innovate together. And I, I'd agree. I, I, I actually think that that COVID has made um, uh, working by a, a video conference uh, the norm. Uh, I mean, if it's, as John said, if, if, if we'd been talking about hiring me without COVID, we would have waited until the visa processes had been finalized, that the flights had been finalized. 
but the no, it's become the norm. And, and I think that this has accelerated things. In terms of uh, uh, how, how, you know, how COVID might drive um, uh, a future uh, potential business, uh, as, as John said, there's, there's working on COVID, but there's also working on, 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 on various other facets. And, and I'll just touch upon a couple. So if you look at, let's say logistics is, it has changed uh, tremendously. Uh, travel uh, and, and the UAE is, is very strong. You talk about DP World there. Travel, Emirates Airlines, and Etihad Airlines, hospitality, again, uh, you know, the Jumeirah Group. Now, if you take Israeli technology and innovation and you take these global giants in logistics and, 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 and travel and you combine them to find solutions, I, I think that, that we're, we're going to find that, that there's, there's a chance here to redefine or to define how, how the, this, this, the, the new normal is, go, is going to look like. Uh, and, and, and we're going to see some, some very interesting, uh, I think, um, uh, innovation there. Yeah. I think we're certainly in for a, for a new normal uh, going into the future. <laughs> um, that's uh, the only thing that we know. Um, I wanted to get into a couple of questions that we have from the, from the audience. And the first one's actually a good one. Um, it's from Jennifer, who, um, who wanted to ask, can you talk about, and this is to the both of you, can you talk about what you have learned from each other? from each other since the inception of this uh, relationship. Um, and I would add to that a second part of the question, um, where do you see also Israel and the UAE learning from each other in terms of um, conducting business, in terms of uh, where your complementary set skills are as well? So one personal and then one on a more um, macro level. Um, I, I, I think I've learned to, uh really desire uh, to dress like an Emirati. Uh, I, I'm very jealous. You're not wearing a Hawaiian shirt, John. No, no, no. I, you know, uh, with all due respect, they glide through life, okay? I, I watch this unbelievably smart way of dressing, which, you know, uh, I'm sure that they, you know, they have their own issues with this, but I, I'm, I'm very envious of the coolness of the Emirati dress. And I'm fascinated with different uh, sets of headgear and what it symbolizes and who's who. Um, and uh, I also find in, in general that um, there is just a genuineness and a, a sweetness in the uh, people that I've met combined with, you know, absolute brilliance and and seriousness of business and it's it's weird because usually you don't see the two together usually you find a lot of smart people who are arrogant okay you know or you find sweet people who are dumb and uh you know not not the always but that's you know th this is a case of of sweet kind people who are really smart and really sharp now i'm sure i'm going to find other things as we get into it but so far it's been uh, it's been pretty cool for me and what do you think, John, uh, that Israel can learn from the UAE in terms of... Uh, I think we can learn scale, okay? In other words, we're, we're in the process of scaling up, right? Israel in the last 10 years has made, you know, huge progress in terms of more money being invested, bigger companies being built. You know, uh, we've been delighted with uh, company Lemonade in the, you know, insure tech area that's now, a, you know, $6 billion plus market cap company out of out of nowhere just a couple of years ago. You know, but when you look at how the Emiratis in particular trade at scale, finance at scale, okay, uh, they have many things to teach us about, about that. So, uh, I mean, from my point, I, I, I think they're, they're linked. The, the most interesting thing has been, uh, I, th I think the speed of, of, of decision-making. Um, uh, the, the, there's, there's, there isn't a fear of, of uh, uh, um, making a mistake, shall we say, uh, in, in the short term. And, and, and this, both on a personal level, and I think is, is useful in, in, in the UAE, uh, or, or that, that could be useful in the, in the UAE, is that part of the learning process is, is to fail. Uh, so if, if, what John was talking about in terms of being able to scale, that, that comes with a lot of planning, but 
but what, what we can learn from the Israelis is also that there are times when you can move fast uh, and, and balance the, the, the uh, strategic planning that, that goes with that. There are times when you gotta take, you know, when, when, when mistakes are, have, uh, need to be avoided as much as possible, but there are times you just make the mistake and that's the cost of learning. And it's, and, and it's if you, if you gotta make a mistake, better make it fast and, and move on. So I, I think I think that, that what what we'll see is is when is that the greatest uh, uh, sort of businesses that that form out of, of, of this new relationship will be the ones who can synthesize and balance this extremely fast execution with with this uh, strategic planning uh, and, and and thinking and and that synthesis I think will 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 be quite powerful. Is it fair to say, judging by your comments, that Israel is, you know, the startup nation, but the UAE is the scale-up nation? Is that correct? And is yeah, that I perhaps think, where I, the I where the marriage? I think the UAE has a lot of entrepreneurial skills, but but are you know expressed sometimes differently, right? In other words, when you you look first of all, the UAE is is is, is a, a country of of seven emirates. Right, and the two leading ones, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, are very different, you know, at least to the extent that I've been able to discern. And uh, a place like, you know, Dubai, literally no oil money, right? In other words, it's, it was built out of out of out out of uh, uh, guts and courage and uh, smart business people, you know, who, uh, when you think about when when was the first. Um, Air, uh, the, the first runway built there was like in the 50s. Yeah. You know, I mean, you think about, I mean, we're very proud in Israel of having, you know, built this place out of not, I mean, we got nothing on them, okay, in terms of their ability to create, you know, real things out of nothing. And I think we share that. Um, and, and, but it's different. I mean, you know, look, Israel is, huge in artificial intelligence and in uh, semiconductors. And um, these guys over there are the, the best, uh, you know, in logistics and in aviation. I mean, you know, if El Al worked like Emirates or Etihad, we'd be very lucky, <laughs> okay? You know, if we had any hotel that could touch the Jumeirah group, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, none of our hotels are anywhere near that. So you ask yourself, these are countries that are roughly the same size. We're just two and a half hours away. We've sort of, uh, you know, grown up apart from each other, but grown up differently, but alike. And and it's just, I, I think, very very cool to see, you know, how this how this works. And 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 by the way, they seem to be incredibly interested and active in a wide variety of areas. Things that will surprise you, for example, like food security or ag tech. When I got there, I thought, okay, it's going to be logistics, it's going to be, you know, cybersecurity, it's going to be fintech, obviously, but it turns out food, and yes, they're extraordinarily interested in, in food tech, they're, they're interested in ed tech, everything, you know, in the healthcare system. I, by the way, have already had, you know, I think it's three uh, COVID tests over there, uh, and I'll tell you, they were more efficient, quicker, and thank God, negative. You know, uh, just like the ones here in Israel, and I was I was pretty impressed. Uh, I think that that when, when when you look at it, maybe it's best not so much to label as as to think about it as these are two relatively young nations that have been growing fast, and they've been coming at it from different perspectives, uh, and and they, you can learn a lot uh, from from each other. I'll, I'll ask you a question, Arsen. When was Emirates Airlines founded? Do you think? Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm the one asking the questions here. Um, <laughs> just take a, take a guess. When did you I'm first? Telling you he's become he's Israeli, 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 Israeli already Israeli was to begin choice. with. <laughs> Multiple choice. Can I call a friend? Uh, okay. Uh, 95, 85, 75. 85. 85. But most people don't know that. That's just because I gave you three. But most well, people- do I, get a, uh, do I get a first class flight at the price? You get a ding ding, you get to, you get a, you get but, to fly in one of those suites, which is really that, you know, that that's a huge travel, you know, 
element for my bucket list. So, so yeah, so, I, so the, the when when you look at at certain types of of businesses that that uh, require massive infrastructure investment, uh, that's where I think the Emirates came from. But when you look at sort of innovation in technology that that does not require that, just requires taking you know, quick risk, fast time to market, and so on, you see uh, a, 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 an advantage um, on, the, on the Israeli entrepreneurs. As John said, both types of, of decision-making is entrepreneurial. You're taking a massive risk when in 1985, you start planning and investing in this. Uh, and, and there's no such thing, I believe, in one is better than the other. It's just that one is more, a more natural fit for certain sectors, certain uh, sectors of the economy, and another is a more natural fit for other sectors. And, and now that you have this expertise uh, in, in these different sectors, uh, bringing them together is 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 what's going to be interesting, and and I think it it's 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 more about um, having, you know, I, I think it's actually smart for, for John to have said, I want to find someone who knows the Emirates to to to, to before I start building out the Emirates. You know, it doesn't have to be Emirati. We have lots of nationalities here. Anybody who's been here at you know 10, 20 years and, and doing and and been in this business. That is the smart thing and, 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 and vice versa, you know, hiring people from Israel and, and ending up, I think the companies that end up with a mix of Emiratis and Israelis are going to come light years ahead. And, and, you know, as John likes to say, it's not one plus one equals two, it's one plus one equals 11, because the different type of thinking, the different uh, work culture will, uh, they'll clash, but out of this clashing, we will evolve something that is much more resilient uh, globally. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Omar here, for actually from the UAE. Uh, what are the top three industries and areas of investment opportunities that you are seeing resulting uh, from the from the accords? You've mentioned about a, I know, a number of them already, but in your view, what are the each? What are the top three? You know, I, I'll just name without being specific because we're still waiting to put out you know press releases. But uh, we really believe in fintech. I think that. Um, there will be huge fintech opportunities between uh, the Gulf and Israel. Uh, I believe very much in uh, healthcare, and I think that that's going to be unbelievable. Digital health, in particular, and uh, I got to tell you, uh, food tech, food tech, and and ag. Those are, but you know that that those are three. We could probably name another ten that you could make the argument for. I'll let I'll let Sabah pull three others, okay, other than fintech and uh, food and, uh, 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 you know, healthcare, because there really are, I think, a, a bunch. So I'll, I'll, I'll just explain why I think fintech is number one. I think, I think, you know, the, the tech part is, is clear. Israel has, has a lot of that. I think, you know, Israel is, is a, a financial hub. The UAE is also a very large financial hub that, that exists. Uh, extends into not just the Middle East, but into uh, South and uh, Southeast Asia, as an example. Um, and <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense. I'll pull an, a, a different one out. I think that that energy uh, tech is going to be big. The, the, the UAE is, 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 you know, has, has deep, deep uh, experience in energy. You know, Israel uh, has, has some. Uh, it's different, um, uh, but again, that marriage I think could be very, very interesting. The third, I think, is is quite possibly in in, in supply chain management. I think the world is changing in terms of the the the, the logistics companies. You know, uh, you know, the UAE can bring something big to the table, but bringing the AI powered platforms that can look globally because these these global supply chains are are highly complex. There's no human that, that can do that and, and developing the ability and making those savings. I think that's another one that could be very, very interesting. Um, I wanted to change. Uh directions a little bit we've, we've had a lot a lot of questions about the politics from the from the United States and specifically with the US administration so we have a question from offer who is asking what are your expectations of the incoming Biden 
administrations? Will it continue the path uh, to peace? And more specifically, do you see um, the US uh, policy difference, difference in policies affecting uh, the business environment? Look, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, the best would be to basically, uh, we're, we're busy involved with business. This is not, this is above our pay grade, right? And luckily, the politicians have done some very smart work, I think, uh, on bringing these two countries together uh, with the help of the US. And I hope that that continues. I, in fact, I'm pretty confident it will, because it's in the interests not just of the UAE and Israel, but it's in the interest of the US. And I dare say it's in the interest of, of the entire world. I mean, I really, um, I've said it before, but I, I'll say it again. I think what happened here is that we dropped something akin to the Iron Curtain, right? In other words, the only way to really understand how we were kept apart is there was this, you know, uh, wall, you know, in the middle of the desert separating us you know, call it a sand curtain. And now that curtain has come down and there is no, there is no going back, right? There, you can't wind this back and say, oops, you know, this policy is, is misguided. We're gonna, you know, make them uh, uh, no longer have these normal ties. No one in their right mind is going to do that. Okay, N neither in America nor anywhere else. And in fact, what we're seeing is that whether it's in, you know, Japan or in Germany or else around the world, there is great interest in enhancing and backing this process in investing in it because of the huge opportunity which is being unleashed here. So I, I think that uh, it's going to be you know, smooth sailing from that perspective, although in politics, one never knows, but I'm, I'm very hopeful. I'll just add my two cents here. These are two independent sovereign nations uh, the leadership in each country made these, these uh, momentous decisions based on what is in the best interest of each of these countries. That best interest isn't going to change based on changes uh, in, in, in the leadership of their, of their mutual allies. You know, their mutual allies supported uh, all of this, of course, but these decisions were based on what, what clearly was uh, the, the leaderships in these countries felt was in the best interest of their, their best national interest. And, and, and now that it started, uh, I, I see no reason uh, re or, or I don't really see how, how any reason for it to, to change. You know, I've, I've, uh, if I was worried about these things, I wouldn't have bothered uh, becoming an employee, an early employee of an Israeli company. So, you know, I put my money where my mouth is you know, uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, here to stay. Do you believe that the relationship and the foundation that uh, you're building uh, here, can that be used as an example uh, for other uh, perhaps um, agreements and the way relation, business relations that are conducted between Israel and other countries uh, in the Gulf, um, not, not just the UAE, but the, the broader Gulf uh, region? You're seeing it happen already. I mean, uh, you know, it started off with, Israel, the UAE, Bahrain joined quickly, then Sudan, now Morocco, and I'm certain that we're not done. Okay, I don't know, you know, how many will join in the year 2021, but I would wager, uh, you know, quite a reasonable dinner that uh, we will double the number of countries this year that will join along, that there'll be many, many more, uh, you know, entering this, uh, this circle. Okay. Um we have a question here just uh, now from the audience, from Millie, who's asking, how would you guide young entrepreneurs entering into the UAE markets in terms of, uh, in terms of research and understanding the business needs? You know, first of all, if you're in Israel, you can go to uh, the newly opened office of ADIO, which is the Abu Dhabi investment office. They're literally opening up sort of a, uh, you know, forward located base for uh, Abu Dhabi and the UAE to provide information. And they, you know, I'm not sure they're fully operational yet, but they've announced it. Their ads are all over Tel Aviv. Okay, you, you know, wherever you turn, you're seeing an ad for do business, you know, in the UAE uh, and let them explain because the gov their government has so many different bodies whose only job it is to make your life easy to set up business. I don't, I don't think I've ever, you know, we're very proud in Israel of the 
Office of the Chief Scientist and all the benefits that we get setting. We haven't seen anything like what they're doing, you know, in uh, the Emirates in terms of helping people set up shops. So uh, I would basically contact the variety of uh, UAE, you know, government uh, oriented uh, groups. And then secondly, what I would do is, you know, get online, use LinkedIn, attend these webinars, these virtual salons, go take a trip with a bunch of groups and start building relationships. And if you can afford it, go find yourself a great partner over there, you know, uh, but, you know, start by getting information and then start building the relationships, then it, it will all start to work out. That'd be my advice. I'll, I'll just give a quick uh, couple of pointers of, of uh, where to look online. So there's the Abu Dhabi Investment Office. I'd also look at the Abu Dhabi Global Markets, which has lots of webinars. Uh, in the Emirate of Dubai, there's the Dubai in, uh, International Financial Center, DIFC. They have a lot of information and then you can spread out from there. Uh, and the Emirate of Sharjah, there's Shara, S-H-E-R-A-A. They're, they're uh, a great uh, uh, incubator program there that, that has a lot of information. If you start with those uh, four uh, sites, they, they will lead you everywhere. They have a lot of information, a lot of uh, webinars uh, that, that, that will point you in the right direction. Okay, uh, another question just now. Um, would you create a, a common forum or place where Israeli entrepreneurs could meet Emirati entrepreneurs, um, not only for investors? So a forum, perhaps, or a platform for um, entrepreneurs as well? There, there are a bunch of these already in formation. I know uh, our friend uh, Floor uh, Hassan Nahum, who's the deputy mayor of Jerusalem, just hosted her own uh, webinar uh, with both Israelis and Emiratis. I participated. Um, and she has, the, I think it's called the UAE Israel Business Forum. There is something called the Emirates Angels, which is a government uh, licensed and sanctioned organization uh, based in the UAE with a bunch of uh, uh, investors who are active and are incredibly friendly and supportive. Mm -hmm. And we've done a bunch of things with them. Um, but I think already there are literally dozens of organizations. All you got to do is go online start searching and you will find them. I mean, I'm sure not all of them are equally good, but you'll figure it out. Um, we have a, it's just, actually there's a question, you, you mentioned the UA Israel Business uh, Forum as well. So we actually have a question from Asher Friedman, who's one of the um, one of the founding members of the organization as well. So he, um, he wanted to know that uh, it appears that insofar as there is angel and early stage investing, it is focused, directed more towards uh, startups in the Gulf. Are you seeing, his question is, a willingness by Emirati investors at this point to invest in Israeli startups? And if so, what kind of investors seem to be most willing? Sabah, you wanna? Yeah, I'll take that. So th there's two parts here. Willingness to in uh, by Emirati to invest in Israel and what stage uh, to invest. The willingness to invest in Israel, uh, Emirati invest globally, right? Uh, they're, they're sophisticated. They will invest anywhere that they, that they feel uh, fits within their, their guidelines. So there, there's no holding back there. Uh, the, the interest in, 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 in seed uh, stage, angel stage investing, I think that that is something that that's going to take time. It's not something about Israel. It's just that um, angel investors usually prefer to invest close to home. Um, of course, the OutCrowd platform hopefully will democratize that. Uh, and and uh, part of my job is to extend the OutCrowd platform uh, to to as as an attractive platform for. Uh, Emiratis, Bahrainis, and other markets in the GCC as they open up to invest uh, in Israeli startups. Okay, um, we have a question that's actually been asked by a number of uh, number of people uh, that submit a question. So this one is from Dana. She actually wanted to ask, how do you see the role of women in advancing this business of peace uh, that we have? You know, um, what's pretty interesting about the Emirati. Uh, culture is that I, I have been watching online and reading in the papers and I'm running into a bunch of brilliant women uh, ministers who are articulate, smart, 
uh, and and it's it's and and I keep on. You have a lot of ministers over there, Sabah. I, I don't know how many you guys have got, but they're they're seeing every time I think I've, I've seen them all, and there's <laughs> there are more who show up, and uh, many of them are, are 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 brilliant women. Turns out we're dealing, for example, with another uh, venture group over there run uh, by a woman. Okay, uh, and the uh, uh, there are women entrepreneurs there. I think that probably they're not very much unlike us and the rest of the venture capital world, which is there is a gender problem, right? We are we are not in an industry uh, which has really become equal in terms of its opportunity and its representation, uh, at, especially at the top in terms of venture capital funds and CEOs. Uh, so hopefully as we, you know, make this business of peace, we'll continue to, you know, not only build ties, but to you know, uh, work on on uh, improving that situation. But you know, uh, uh, I I've been impressed that um, uh, the, the the women who we've met at least are are, are very strong and uh, very impressive. I mean, there's if if for if if you're talking about you know entrepreneurs in in the UAE, I, I can name right now off the top of my head two uh, uh, um, platforms that uh, investment platforms that I, I I respect. One is Mindshift Capital by Heather Henyan, and the other is Romina, that that look for uh, female led uh, startups. So I, I you know in terms of uh, can they deliver? I, I think absolutely. I, I think is there the, the support? There's uh, there is the support there, as as John said. You know, uh, the, the, uh, we're not going to pretend that the uh, challenges aren't there. The, the gender bias isn't there, but also the support is there to to um, uh, make it uh, 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 try to balance it out. Okay, um, we have a question here from the audience as well. Um, with the, with the flourishing business relationships within the Middle East, certainly as we see through UAE and Israel, uh, where does that leave global investors like China? How does that impact uh, what, what we are seeing in the Gulf? Creates more opportunities for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and look, what, what's going to happen here is that, and it's happening already, is that people are attracted, smart money investors, and the bigger and the smarter you are, the more you're attracted to where the future is being built. And this is the future. What you're seeing here tonight, you know, three months ago, it didn't exist. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's now roaring. And uh, I think that, you know, uh, smart investors like many Chinese firms see this and want to be part of it. And so uh, I, I think that you will see not just this, you know, really interesting bilateral, call it trilateral with the U.S., relationship, but you'll see Europe and Asia and other continents. I mean, I think there's huge impact on Africa going to result from this as uh, uh, our two countries work together. And uh, uh, Southeast Asia in particular, I think, is going to be really interesting. Um, Sabah? Yeah, I mean, look, if if I, I don't see why th there would be an issue. I see uh, opportunity. If you just look at China's uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative, I mean, the UAE Israel seems to me to be a, a, a crucial link in, 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 in such an initiative. Um, and, and as I said, you know, the, the investors globally, uh, they're, they're going to look at what fits and, and hear if they see the opportunity that we see, and and I think it's clear, they're going to keep investing uh, uh, and 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 figure out ways to participate in this new um, these new opportunities. Do you see any risks um, involved? In terms of look, I mean, are there risks for the Chinese? I mean, the the reality is that you know, for example, in Israel, there's been talk about the the uh, port operating contracts, you know, in Haifa where the construction was done by Chinese firms, US has uh, raised issues. And it turns out now in the, uh, what I understand, I'm not, you know, firsthand knowledge, this is just simply from the press, but from what I understand is in the bidding for the operational contracts, it turns out that the two big bidders are now uh, a Dubai firm uh, against a, a Chinese firm bidding for Israeli business. 
which in my opinion, can, it can only be good for the world, right? In other words, open competition, uh, you know, creating more opportunities for everybody. That's the sort of the capitalist way. And uh, I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, you've got to you've got to think that that the the other uh, stakeholders and counterparties in, involved are competent, and, and it's not going to be uh, nationality based. You're going to look at at who's going to give you the product, the service, and and that you know the the the, the, the other side is competent enough. So I, I I don't see any incremental risk there at all. I I I I, I welcome greater uh, competition. Okay. We have a couple more questions. I'm just mindful of so timing as well. Um, Mike Humphrey, who's a US-based venture capital investor, wanted to know what are, perhaps to this to you, Sabah, um, what are some practical ways to network with Emirati VCs um, as they invest in opportunities arising from the, from the accords? Well, I, I, the, I mean, the, there's, there's, I think that the best way again is everyone has now gone online with their webinars and 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 doing a, a quick search. Uh, you know, they're now my competitors, so I'm not going <laughs> to. No, no, the, the, the best way, Sabah, is from them to go on the Art Crowd platform. Yeah, and, we <laughs> you know, we, uh, we're going to be syndicating these opportunities. You know, not all of them, but you know, what we, we believe in. Yeah, but, I mean, so, first of all, Mike, if you if you know of any opportunities, bring them our way. You know, I'm John at our crowd, you know, Sabah Al-Banali at our crowd. Um, we would be delighted to hear from you, but we honestly are going to be putting up opportunities on our site. Uh, I, and I think that open platforms, I mean, there's a, you know, a wonderful platform in the Emirates called Venture Souk, okay, where you can get information there. They're good, smart people, you know, about uh, investments. There are a bunch of, you know, go to the Emirates Angels. You know, you have to start reaching out. and like anywhere, uh, I think that you know networking is is not always easy, but in in this case, people are really friendly, and you've got this honeymoon period where everybody's tent is open and it's ahalan v'salan. You know, come on in and 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 and, and let's you know drink some coffee and you know uh, get to know each other, and and you should take advantage of that now. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's part of my job to to bring that to you. Uh... To, to venture capitalist, uh, venture souk is one. Is one. I'll, I'll name another who, who aren't a VC. It's called Magnet M A G N I T T. That provides a lot of information and a lot of VCs uh, network. That's uh, one that I don't have a commercial relationship, but but it's great. But you know, within six months, you're you're going to see that on our crowd, or or I might be fired. So so. <laughs> I, uh, I would also, by the way, read some of the really excellent English language stuff about the Gulf and whether it's, you know, the nation in the UAE or college times, you know, or, uh, you know, there's just, uh, or your old company, which uh, Sabah founded, Zawiya, okay, uh, Zawiya, you know, yeah. how is that spelled? Zawiya, Z-A-W-Y-A. Okay, that was bought by Reuters, okay, and it provides, you know, and all of these guys are covering quite uh, smartly a lot of the business coverage. So, you know, just the way you would do this in Israel and, and read about what's going on, you can do it in the Gulf as well. It's interesting. I'm seeing there's a lot more media partnerships now as well between Israeli and Emirati um, uh, organ news organizations as well. So that's something that uh, I think perhaps in the more recent times, uh, television and uh, newspaper sites are trying to um, I think sort of increase uh, these opportunities of, uh, of reach um, as well. Um, there's a really great question here, which I personally wanted to ask. I'm glad somebody else did. So I really want to hear from uh, the both of you. Uh, Mary Milburn asks, how can culture and ambassadors of cultural diplomacy, um, how can they play a larger role in the business of peace between Israel and UAE? So how can culture advance uh, this relationship? Is and business opportunities from that. I, I have a, a, a daughter and a son-in-law who are singers. and. Uh, they are a little bit upset with me because I have not delivered the goods. They've asked me, I've got to bring them in touch with uh, a proper Emirati singer. And I, I really haven't bothered Sabah about this yet, but now I've got to do it. I'll do it online. Uh, they want to- description. 
yeah, they want well, well, we'll we'll send everybody out the link once they you know record it. But they want to record with Emirati singers, and what they really like would be another husband and wife team, if such a thing exists in the uh, in the Emirates, where they can do stuff. There seems to be, you know, whether it's Omer Adam or uh, you know all of these Israeli, you know, uh, uh, I think Sarit Haddad has been out there. A lot of Israeli. Uh, uh, artists, I know that Idan Reichel went out. Okay, are all we're all excited about going to Dubai. First of all, they could, you know, perform there during the the lockdowns and whatnot. But I I, I really believe that uh, uh, culture plays a huge role in this, and that uh, the more that we sort of celebrate each other's culture and understand it, and uh, you know, have fun together and uh, appreciate it. The, from what I've seen in the Emiratis, they have a very broad set of cultural interests that run from, you know, the Louvre, okay, to, uh, uh, you know, great Middle Eastern, you know, food and great Middle Eastern, you know, artwork. And uh, I, I think that there will be a huge cultural interchange, in my opinion. But, Sabah? I, I think it will play a, a very large role. How it will evolve, I don't know. But I do know that from, uh, that from what I've seen, that the Emiratis and Israelis are very curious about culture. It's, it's culture is, 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 is a very important part of life. And this curiosity and, uh, is, is going to play, I think, a, a significant part um, in, in all facets, uh, business and otherwise, of relationships. Um, we've, we've got time for maybe just think two more questions before we write up, but it'd be remiss of me not to ask uh, precisely because so many people have asked this. Um, what sort of effect do you think or hope that this, you know, burgeoning relationship between Israel and the Gulf uh, will or can have on cultivating stronger partnerships, especially between Israeli and Palestinian entrepreneurs? I think it will have a hugely positive impact. Okay, I think that um, the more Israel is integrated into the region, the better it's going to get uh, with our closest neighbors uh, and you know potential partners here, and uh, um, I think you're going to see remarkable progress. That's a you know perhaps a, uh, you know veer. I don't want to go into politics, but I, I I really sense that this is going to be positive. I think that uh, the idea that somehow uh, you know ongoing animosity or conflict is going to somehow make peace more tenable and, and more likely is, is, has been proven wrong, okay? That, that basically, you know, getting the, the getting together here uh, of Israel and now four nations in the region uh, is only going to bring uh, ultimate peace, you know, with our closest neighbors uh, quicker, in my opinion. Well, I, I agree with John, and, and, and a, a, a different way to think about it is who's going is, is is that the palestinian entrepreneurs um and and here uh you know we're talking about uh in, in the territories though because the ones that are in the uae they're doing fine I, I, you know but but the ones in the territories they're gonna have great ideas about how it works they share the language they share it's not just ideas and i don't think it's just entrepreneurs i you know i i was talking to one very senior, uh, uh, a very successful ser serial Israeli entrepreneur. And he was talking about uh, building a business and he wanted to, to, to he was thinking about deploying um, an, a, a, a team here in, in, in the UAE. And he was talking about, you know, I've got to go find, you know, as many uh, Palestinian tech guys as possible because you know, they'll probably find it easier to come over than, than um, uh, uh, non, uh, you know, than others. So I, I see that in the end, opportunity will always comes whenever you, you, you move, uh, you create uh, new um, economic channels. And I will bet that we will be surprised by, by how, how these opportunities work. And I think that, that, from a business point of view, the idea should be just look at what the uh, the business opportunity is, and 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 it's just going to be just it's it's just expanding horizons. 
you know, these, these four new agreements have expanded horizons. So each time you expand horizons, there's new opportunities. Um, last question before, before we wrap this up, and it's a great question. It's from uh, Colin um, Hyun. Um, where do you see our crowd in 10 years time? <laughs> um, a lot bigger. <laughs> uh, with a significant, really interested and multifaceted presence uh, in the Gulf and the wider region. Um, we will be, you know, building a significant team. I mean, I, I, in 10 years time, we'll have, you know, I would dare say hundreds of people working with us in the, in the Gulf. Uh, and we'll be developing technology as well as uh, working on investments there. And uh, in Israel, I would hope that we have dozens of Emiratis. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to welcoming Emirati interns into our company and uh, our portfolio companies. You know, we've had maybe about 300 interns work at our crowd from all over the world, from China and Harvard and Yale and Caltech and uh, Europe. Uh, and how great is, and you know, by the way, Palestinian interns as well, but how great is this gonna be when we can take the best and the brightest uh, young people from the uh, the Emirates and bring them, you know, to work with us and 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 vice versa. So uh, I, I think that you know the next this decade is going to be very very good for technology and innovation. And I think that what's happening is that people are moving to online platforms for everything. And online venture capital is going to be big. And our crowd is the biggest in this area, and will continue to grow. I see. Uh, and and I hope I don't upset you, John. But I see, uh, <laughs> I, I see our crowd in in ten years. I see that that um, the the opportunity in the UAE and and the Gulf and and uh, hopefully I will be able to execute on the strategy that this will could create a a a, um, a a formula for success around the world. I see our crowd as being a, a global player with centers around the world. I see it being the online player that right now we have one set of products uh, and that you'll see more. The, the same ease that, that you can invest in, in equity, you'll be able to invest in debt. Uh, I, I, I believe that the Arcrad platform but within 10 years will, will actually create more liquidity by being able to offer secondaries easier on, 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 the, on the platform. I, I see our crowd transforming how VC is done. I, I, I see, j j you know, that that uh, it's it's just going to be inject massive amounts of liquidity, not just in terms of primary markets but secondary markets, and completely across the uh, uh, capital structure. Uh, and and that is what what I what, what I what I believe. Amen to that. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm, I'm mindful of the time. Unfortunately, we, we have come uh, come to an end. I'm sure we could speak for much, much longer. I wanted to thank you, first of all, for this incredibly enlightening, exciting, and I think truly inspiring, uh, inspiring session. I think the both of you embody not only the very best of the entrepreneurial sphere, but uh, very much of, I think, what these uh, peace accords uh, are trying to achieve as well. So even though there is, it's been a tumultuous 20, uh, 2020 the past year there's certainly been some uh, you know truly fantastic things to come out of it and this here is one of them and hopefully uh, soon uh, this year we can only take it to further and further heights i wanted to thank our crowd especially for putting us together that whom this could not have uh, happened and hopefully this is just the first such uh, seminar of this kind a lot a lot of issues to discuss which i think we just uh, we just touched upon to Till the Internationals and Jane, your team. Thank you for your support, Sharaka, and of course, uh, Times of Israel as well. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to leave the final word with the both of you, but I will just ask us, this has been asked of us in the chat as well, how can people reach you as well? If you can please just maybe mention uh, what's the best way to be, to be in touch with the both of you. And please, if you have any last words, I'm leaving the floor with you, John and Sabah, please. You can reach me at john, J-O-N, at rcrowd.com. I'd love to hear from you. And my last word is uh, uh, 
this is not even the end of the beginning. We are so early in this process and it's very exciting and join us, you know, make it happen. Uh, bring us deal flow, check out our investments, you know, give us your ideas and your energies. And uh, we're, we're delighted, uh, you know, that you listened with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, you can reach me at uh, Sabah, S-A-B-A-H, at rcrowd.com. Um, and I, I think my last word here is that this is exciting and, and you will find opportunities uh, because of the Abraham Accords. If you can't find them right away, just keep educating yourself and you will find opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Arsene. Great, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.